Africa's record-breaking dam set to ruin the Nile River. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD for short, formerly known as the Millennium Dam, is under construction in the Benishangul Gumas region of Ethiopia on the Blue Nile River, which is located about 40 kilometers east of Sudan. The project is owned by Ethiopian Electric Power Corporation. Construction of the Grand Renaissance Dam started in April 2011, after the $4.7 billion engineering, procurement, and construction contract was awarded to Selini Kostratori. The project is located approximately 700 kilometers northwest of the capital, Addis Ababa, along the Blue Nile. At the end of the works, it will be the largest dam in Africa, 1,800 meters long, 155 meters high, and with a total volume of 10.4 million meters cubed. Additionally, it will create a reservoir covering 1,875 square kilometers and contains 74 billion cubic meters of water. The project involves the construction of a main dam in roller compacted concrete, with two power stations installed at the foot of the dam. The power stations are positioned on the right and left banks of the river and comprise 13 Francis turbines, with a total installed power of 5,150 megawatts and an estimated production of 15,700 gigawatts hours per year. The project is completed by a 15,000 M3S capacity concrete spillway and a rock fill saddle dam, 5 kilometers long, 50 meters high, and 15.3 million meters cubed in volume, both located on the left bank. The GERD is a major project whose construction required innovative solutions. One feature was the composition of the Roller Compacted Concrete RCC, developed by global experts to have it settle more quickly thereby improving the production and quality of the material. Recently, the tensions among Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on the Blue Nile escalated, particularly after Ethiopia announced that it had started filling the dam's reservoir, an action contrary to Egypt's mandate that the dam not be filled without a legally binding agreement over the equitable allocation of the Nile's waters. Egypt also escalated its call to the international community to get involved. Already, the United States has threatened to withhold development aid to Ethiopia if the conflict is not resolved resolved and an agreement is reached. The dispute over the project is part of a long-standing feud between Egypt and Sudan, the downstream states on one hand, and Ethiopia and the upstream riparians on the other, over access to the Nile's waters, which are considered a lifeline for millions of people living in Egypt and Sudan. Despite the intense disagreements, though, Ethiopia continues to move forward with the dam, arguing that the hydroelectric project will significantly improve livelihoods in the region more broadly. And although conflict over the allocation of the waters of the Nile River has existed for many years, the dispute, especially that between Egypt and Ethiopia, significantly escalated when the latter commenced construction of the dam on the Blue Nile in 2011. Ethiopia, whose highlands supply more than 85% of the water that flows into the Nile, has long argued that it has the right to utilize its natural resources to address widespread poverty and improve the living standards of its people. Although the Eastern African nation has argued that the hydroelectric project will not significantly affect the flow of water into the Nile, Egypt, which depends almost entirely on the Nile waters for household and commercial uses, sees the dam as a major threat to its water security. Over the years, Egypt has used its extensive diplomatic connections and the colonial era 1929 and 1959 agreements to successfully prevent the construction of any major infrastructure projects on the tributaries of the Nile. As a consequence, Ethiopia has not been able to make significant use of the river's waters. However, as a result of the ability and willingness of Ethiopians at home and abroad to invest in the dam project, the government was able to raise a significant portion of the money needed to start the construction of the dam. Chinese banks provided financing for the purchase of the turbines and electrical equipment for the hydroelectric plants. And although Egypt has persistently argued that the 1959 agreement between Egypt and Sudan is the legal framework for the allocation of the waters of the Nile, Ethiopia and other upstream riparian states reject that argument. The 1959 agreement allocated all the Nile River's waters to Egypt and Sudan, leaving 10 billion cubic meters for seepage and evaporation, but afforded no water to Ethiopia or other upstream riparian states, the sources of most of the water that flows into the Nile. Perhaps even more consequential is the fact that this agreement granted Egypt veto power over future Nile River projects. Officials in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia's capital, argue that the dam will have no major impact on water flow into the Nile, instead arguing that the hydropower dam will provide benefits to countries in the region 
including as a source of affordable electric power and as a major mechanism for the management of the Nile, including the mitigation of droughts and water salinity. Egypt, fearing major disruptions to its access to the Nile's waters, originally intended to prevent even the start of the dam's construction. Indeed, Egypt has called the filling of the dam an existential threat as it fears the dam will negatively impact the country's water supplies. At this point, though, the project is nearly completed, and so Egypt has shifted its position to try to secure a political agreement over the timetable for filling the dam's reservoir and how it will be managed, particularly during droughts. One question that keeps coming up is, will Ethiopia be willing to release enough water from the reservoir to help mitigate a drought downstream? Sudan is caught between the competing interests of Egypt and Ethiopia. Although Khartoum initially opposed the construction of the project, it has since warmed up to it, citing its potential to improve prospects for domestic development. Nevertheless, Sudan continues to fear that the operation of the dam could threaten the safety of Sudan's own dams and make it much more difficult for the government to manage its own development projects. In August last year, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed announced that his country had completed the third filling of the reservoir behind its controversial Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. And the country also recently announced that the second of the project's 13 hydropower turbines is now operational. About half of the citizens of Ethiopia have access to electricity, a lower percentage than most other countries in Africa, and a much lower percentage than most other countries in the world. And it is because of this that the Ethiopian government began constructing a dam on the Blue Nile in 2011 that will rank as Africa's largest hydroelectric dam when completed in 2023. If it works as planned, the project will usher in a new era and help brighten the mostly dark landscape that appears in nighttime images of Ethiopia. In addition to generating electricity, the dam should temper destructive seasonal floods in Sudan, boost food supplies in Ethiopia by providing reliable irrigation water, and extend the lifespan of other dams downstream on the Nile by trapping sediment. However, by changing the river's hydrology, the dam may have an impact on millions of people who live and farm downstream in Egypt and parts of Sudan and use the Nile's water. After over 10 years of construction, the project is almost complete. In 2020, water managers started filling the reservoir, a process that could take from a few years to a decade, depending on weather conditions and how much of the Blue Nile's flow the dam managers hold back. Ethiopia has an incentive to fill the reservoir quickly, to start generating power and start paying for the $5 billion project. However, a rapid filling could significantly reduce the water downstream since the Blue Nile provides 60% of the water that flows into the Nile. Additionally, research indicates that rapid filling of the reservoir could lead to severe economic losses, though researchers note that expanding groundwater extraction, adjusting the operation of Egypt's Aswan High Dam, and cultivating crops that require less water could help offset some of the impacts. As of February 2022, one team led by University of Virginia researchers estimated that the dam's reservoir was less than 15% full based on satellite observations. Around 97% of Egypt's population of 106 million people live along the River Nile and depend on it as a source of fresh water. There is also a deep-lying emotional aspect at play in the country's criticism of the project, as the river has always been considered Egypt's lifeline. But despite the persistent tension, researchers point out that there are political and scientific ways to settle the situation. That said, it remains to be seen whether by the time of the dam's completion in 2024 or 2025, depending on the amount of rainfall during the rainy season, any agreement will be reached. And that's it from us today. If you would like to continue enjoying more of such insightful content, then be sure to click on the subscribe icon below. Also, give us a like, share the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. Until next time, thank you for watching.